Hi guys, I did recently make a video and I said that if I got enough likes then I would, uh, whenever I was messing with my oscilloscope, I would just try the oscilloscope functionality on this just to see if it would get us by for t tinkering in the shed, you know, type type scenarios, you know, so today I'm looking at something called bi-directional D-shot here and I've set, I've set it up here and I can see I can see the bi-directional uh, signal here on my oscilloscope and I thought what I'd do today is true to my word I would just try the LHT00 SU1 to see if it would it would it would get the information I needed so let's, let's have a go so what we have here is an F722 mini flight controller and an ESC the flight controller sends the bi-directional D-shot signal over to the ESC it sends a speed command if you like to the that we want the motor to spin at and then the ESC monitors the RPM which is the bit I'm trying to get to actually for my project and that comes back to the ESC and it, and it sends that data back to the flight controller by switching on the I understand the consequences and we'll increase this speed up here and we'll just position that about 2900 RPM okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to connect the LHT 00SU1 up I'm going to need a ground connection so I'm going to just clip onto the USB tab here if I can like that and I'm going to get my analog my white wire which is connected to the analog analog 1 channel and I'm going to start my software bear in mind that I do have my LHT SU001 plugged into my USB AX port like we discussed on the, my previous video uh, which was called uh, LHT00 SU1 yes it is a signal generator video where we discuss how to, how to set up those ports I'm going to place my analog wire on the little pad on the ESC that's taking in the D-shot signal I'm on 8 megabits per second sample rate and I'm going to collect a single a single view like this there you go we've got a, a pretty good signal there oh I don't know where that went let's do, do that again I jumped down to 6 for some reason. Let's put that back on 8. I'm going to move my trigger actually over here because I don't want too much pre-store because it's uh, it's quite a fast signal. There you go, we've got a signal there. Let's try, try that again so if I can get a better, better signal. That's better. Right, okay. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, I'm removing my probe now. I've got... Oh no, I haven't actually got the trace I wanted. So I'm going to go into it again. Again. And then again. Okay. So I have a trace. That's better. I've got a full trace. That's what I wanted to see. So this is a trace that looks very much like what my oscilloscope looks like. So here's this trace, and it looks very much very similar to what we have on my oscilloscope. And if we use the lines here, we can the y-axis we can see that we've got we can diagnose that we've got a a 3.3 digital signal here so 
we wouldn't be able to detect that with a with a, with a multimeter. We didn't need an expensive scope to scope to see it, so we know it's a it's a digital logic 3.3 signal. We can see these here, and we can we can drill in a bit more. And I've counted these, and although, okay, we're looking at in an analog signal, and it's, it's a digital signal, but we're looking at it in an analog way, just just like the oscilloscope would be, the bench oscilloscope. So, and 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 these these, these make sense. We can measure. Let's go. Let's zoom in a little bit more. So this first one should be about one microsecond. So let's have a quick look. Let's go there and there. Say close enough, and we can see that we've got uh, where where are we? Not one microsecond. Sorry, it's it's 500 nanosecond because I'm on D shot 600, and this one here, I think that just over 1.75 US. That's that's looking about right from there. And if I go to there, yep, about one US. Okay, so that's that's about about right. Similar re results to to the oscilloscope. To be fair, let's get that focused in. So if I put the cursors on here, and I go up and down, we've got a 3.34 signal. Which is the same as the logic analyzer looked looked at it with, and if I zoom in a little here, if I can get in in round here like this, zoom in a bit more. That's that's the first signal there, and if I put the cursors onto the X type cursors, and I measure. This one here, X1. I think we had 500 here. Ah, okay. Let me get a new signal. I think that might be D shot 300. Let me grab a new signal from here. Oh, so Daisy. Better. New signal. There you go. Get my cursors going. About five, five, six nanoseconds. To be fair, I think the logic analyzer is a little bit closer there with that one, maybe to to reality. Okay, and then if I come to this side, what have we got here? And we've got about one, one point one microsecond. So I think it's only fair that we show a pulse view on on here and. What I'm going to show you is that I'm now using the. I've swapped over now, so I'm in the I'm in the pulse view port. This is all my peripherals, like my headset and stuff on, on here. So ignore these guys, but you know the, the the blue one is connected to this to this box here, and it's in the pulse view. If you skipped over it before, uh, then please look back at my uh, LHT 00SU1. Uh, it, it yes, it is a signal generator video to show you how to set those two ports up. So here we go, we're in the uh, pulse view, and I'm going to use the white wire first. I'm going to actually take an analog uh, reading of this again, just so it's, it's it's comparable first, and so we can see what it looks like in pulse view. I'm on 8 megahertz, by the way, just 1 million samples, and if I zoom in, you can see that it looks very similar to what, what we've seen already. I can hover over here, and I can see there in the bottom right, not so bottom, but just just down here, we can see that it's that, that it's actually a. It says 3.44 there. I think some, somewhere up here it goes. It goes a little bit higher, 3.5 now. The thing is with pulse view, there's no way to calibrate the analog circuitry, whereas in uh, USB AX there is, and I know that it's slightly high. I can't remember what it was, but it was about 0 0.2, 0 0.3 maybe. So 
that 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 would take account of of, of while it's reading reading high. But to be fair, we're not in pulse view for this because we want the digital signal. So I'm going to swap over to digital channel one, and I'm going to place that on the D shot bin, and then I'm going to click run again. And now I've got a got up here, and I can zoom in. And this is the much better signal now. Now it's starting to look like what it should look like, look like really. And this is why, uh, at the end of this video, it's it, it's it's kind of what you would do to to analyze this signal. You would use a logic analyzer because it is a logic signal. And really, this is where this actually beats the oscilloscope, isn't it? Really, the bench oscilloscope. I mean, the bench oscilloscope is 160 quid, and this is just 40. But it's actually giving me a really clear signal now. I can really zo really zoom in on this. I can I can look at the width of those signals here, and we can see we've got one one microsecond there. And I can look at look at that. I can see. I would have thought that would have been less than one microsecond actually. If I, uh... There you go. That's better. Not it's because I'm not zoomed in enough. There you go. Six six two five nanoseconds and then this long pulse should be double really yeah 1000 yep yeah, okay almost almost double am I am I right there on the on the edge not quite there you go so I think this is obviously a lot better solution really logic analysis is is, is what we need and for 40 quid that's gonna that, that's really gonna pay off well i hope that was helpful for you guys uh if you if it was please like and subscribe it means a lot uh it tells me that you you, you want to see more more than this but uh i think in conclusion what i've, what I've discovered here is that you know you've got a, a 460 pound desktop oscill oscilloscope i think i said 100 and 160 maybe earlier but it's 460 pound oscilloscope on the bench this is this LHT 00SU1 is it was was 40 pounds and i think okay it's a bit like me i guess you know software is looking a bit old it's not got many jazzy features you know and sometimes a little bit slow to respond i guess but uh but you know it's at the end of the day it's got the job done it's 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 actually answered all the questions i didn't really need the oscilloscope and okay, you could argue that a logic analyzer, you know, it's a bus you know, signal that you're trying to read, so therefore you probably would err towards a logic analyzer. But at the end of the day, I wanted to know the whether it was a 3.3 volt signal or a 5 volt signal. It's answered that question. That allows me to choose the right uh, chip now to use. You know, obviously I'm going to use 3.3 volt logic, so ESP32, Teensy4 or something. So, so it's answered that question. And using the logic analyzer, I'm sure I'm going to be able to get that uh, RPM out of that uh, that, 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 that bidirectional. Uh, feature of, of of the D shot, so I think that's great. So please, guys, you know, li like and subscribe. Like I said, it means a lot. Cheers, guys. Take care. Bye bye.